Welcome to another edition of the official Jets podcast, episode two of the draft pick profile series presented by Verizon. And on today's episode, EA and I will break down the Jets second round pick, Denzel Mims, the former Baylor Bear, who the Jets took at number 59. And of course, you'll hear from the Jets personnel talking about Denzel Mims, and you'll hear from the man himself, Mr. Denzel Mims. But first things first, EA, let's talk about where the Jets were on the clock and how they actually acquired Mims because originally they had the 48th overall selection, which they traded to the Seattle Seahawks, and the Jets slide back 11 spots to 59. They pick up an extra third-round pick, pick 101, which then turned into a couple more picks, and we'll talk about that on a later episode. And at 59, Denzel Mims, who was slotted or projected even to be – perhaps the third or fourth receiver off the board in some mock drafts is there for the taking at 59. Yeah, this whole thing was fascinating the way it played out, Greens, because uh, the Jets' two clear areas of need, uh, two of the four, you would say, would be tackle and receiver, and they addressed tackle with the selection of Mekhi Becton Thursday night, number 11 overall, and they had all the receivers on the board at that pick 11 and they opted to go back in there. And ironically, the first receiver came off the board a couple minutes later when the Raiders threw an old L Davis curve at you and went for the speed receiver in Henry Ruggs, the fastest wide out in this draft class. And then Jerry Judy fell, I would say to Denver at number 15 overall. And a lot of people uh, were awfully surprised that C.D. Lamb <laughs> not only went to the Dallas Cowboys, but it happened at number 17 overall. So setting the stage for night two greens, we knew there was going to be a run on receivers and the Jets and Joe Douglas were sitting there right dead center in the middle of the second round at number 48 overall. We saw T. Higgins start the night. The Clemson product go to the Cincinnati Bengals and Joey Burrow with the 33rd overall selection. Michael Pittman, a former teammate of Sam Darnold at USC's at USC, he goes 34 to the Indianapolis Colts, and Philip Rivers will be throwing him the football in 2020. Then we saw a little bit of a gap, right? And the next receiver off the board, Jacksonville went LaVisca Chenault with the 42 overall, and then Penn State alum. K.J. Hamler goes to the Denver Broncos at 46. So on night two greens, you had four receivers come off the board in round two before Douglas gets on the clock at 48 overall. And at that point, he says, I have a number of players I like if I move down and the Jets move down. And then when the Jets move down, I'm sure a lot of Jets fans were thinking, oh my God, the Jets are going to miss out on a receiver because I know a lot of Jets fans were clamoring for a receiver. And then you think about who was off the board or who came off the board rather in those 11 spots. Chase Claypool goes 49 overall to the Pittsburgh Steelers who might end up being a tight end because Claypool had said that he would be open to playing tight end and then a little bit of a gap and then the son of Jets wide receivers coach, Sean Jefferson, two picks before the Jets are on the clock, gets selected. That's Florida wide receiver Van Jefferson. He goes to the LA Rams. And then at 58 overall, you're probably assuming that the Vikings aren't going to take another wide receiver after they took Justin Jefferson in the first round. And then lo and behold, Denzel Mims is there for the Jets at 59. And I just want to reiterate this. I was speaking to Dane Brugler of the athletic and we were doing our draft recap segment of Brugler's draft board. And he said, if Denzel Mims went 29 and not 59, nobody would have batted an eye. So the fact that the jets were able to get Denzel Mims at 59, I think it just shows what great value the jets got in Mims. Uh, I think it's a good point. I think there's an overreaction there when Joe D moved back Because a lot of people, and I know you were getting this on social media too, as we're creating content at the same time, a lot of people wanted Douglas to take Mims with the 48th overall selection greens. Um, 
So you have to always let it play out a little bit. So he comes back and he still gets Mims and then he gets additional draft picks in the Jets. Again, as we entered this weekend, we knew they had multiple holes. And the other point of the process is you want to increase the depth on your roster, not saying Mims is going to come in and be a depth piece, he's going to be expected to contribute immediately uh, for this team. But where the Jets, I think, got really sold on Denzel Mims was when you were down in Mobile, Alabama, covering the Senior Bowl because he was the top receiver. He separated himself from everybody else who was down there that week. And there is no better time to have a great final audition per se before you go to Indianapolis than those practice sessions when people watch you run routes one-on-one against some of the nation's top prospects. And in terms of the senior bowl, it's the last time that players are wearing pads until they get drafted by their respective teams and then go to training camp and everything of that nature. And before EA and I break down man and talk about his collegiate road and what he did at Baylor. Let's hear from the Jets personnel on what they like about Denzel Mims. Denzel's going to be another big, fast athletic target for us on the outside. And he's got the ability to play inside in in the slot. And when we need him in certain packages and situations, what we need, like I said, a big, fast guy who ran four, three, eight, he's a former track champion. This is a guy who's been extremely productive with three consecutive seasons of 50 catches or more. And showed really well at the senior bowl, came on the scene there, and then it took it to another level when he got to the combine running 4 3 8. We've got a lot of upside with him still. We feel like there's still development with him. And, you know, we're really excited about having him and adding him to the mix with what we have in terms of guys that, that Sam can use as weapons. Just a really impressive player. You know, he's got, you know, outstanding height, weight, and speed for the position. When the ball's in the air, look out, because this guy can really play above the rim in that regard. And he has really good body control and stuff. So he's got nice size. He's a good red zone target. He's a good target for Sam. I think the game's going to translate really well for him because, I mean, you know, the coverage gets tighter at the next level, but but he's still going to be, you know, almost 6'3 and and running 4'3. So he's going to – I think he's going to be at an advantage uh, the way he he uses his body to to position himself to to make contested plays. And, you know, that's really going to work to his advantage. I like when guys play in an all-star game and they, they play at a, at a high level versus good competition, and he, he did just that at the Senior Bowls. He showed off his, his, his wingspan, his catching radius, and, you know, he, he had a good week and, you know, against good competition. I thought he flashed deep speed. He showed courage in the middle of the field and did a good job down in Mobile. And for us, I think that means a lot. We're really excited about him. Now, this is a player that in August or September, even October, he would have been well below the radar. But in November, and then obviously uh, when Baylor got into their bowl game against Georgia in the Sugar Bowl, and then the Senior Bowl, and then the Combine, this player's been on a rapid rise up a lot of draft boards. I, I would say that you know he worked his way up to the area where he was taken in the second round. And you know he brings a, a lot of size, a lot of vertical speed. And the thing about him to me was just the fact that you know, as a rookie, he can run a hitch, a hook, and a go, and a, and a back shoulder fade. And a defense will have to respect that. Teams will have to respect that height, weight, speed on the perimeter. And hopefully that'll help our offense in terms of the run game and maybe opening up some options for other receivers because uh, this guy has to be respected in terms of being a vertical threat. We're, we're going to keep improving with him, too. I think there's there's room for growth with what he's already brought to the table and, and, you know, as a coach that that makes us excited and be able to help him grow over the years and and see how, how far we can take him. The route tree is not a concern for me with him. I think he's got the ability to to learn. You know, that was one of the things that just going through our process of him being able to pick up things when our coaches met with him. It's, It's really a lot of times where you have a younger player coming in you have a whole off season go through, but we're not going to have that more than likely this year. I mean, if we do, it's going to be limited time and we're going to have to get them caught up as fast as we can when we're able to do the virtual stuff. And, you know, by the time he steps on the field, hopefully he has a good grasp of that, which I, I feel like you will. And 
we'll figure out how far he goes mentally and then we'll take advantage of what he knows and, you know, allow him to, to do the things that he does really well as much as possible. EA, a couple things really stand out to me. The first thing you mentioned, Henry Ruggs and the speed that he offers at 427. Well, Denzel Mims, not far behind, 4.38 40-yard dash at the combine. But more than that, he's the only player, EA, over the past three seasons in the NCAA to have at least eight receiving touchdowns in each of the last three seasons. And in two of those, he eclipsed the 1,000-yard the mark. It's uh, pretty impressive how far he's come since after his freshman year when he went into Matt Rule's office, who was the coach at Baylor, who did a fine job, uh, you know, taking that program and uh, really lifting it up after everything that it had been through. And he's now uh, the head coach of the Carolina Panthers. But Mims went into Rule and actually asked him if he could switch back to cornerback because he had played on both sides of the ball in high school. And you just saw the guy continue to develop over his collegiate career. A sophomore year really broke, broke out green, 61 catches, more than 1,000 yards, 1,087 receiving yards, and the eight touchdowns. Then he had the eight touchdowns again as a junior. And then last season, 66 catches, 1,020 yards receiving, and 12 touchdowns. That's the kind of production you love because – not only is he putting up yards, but he's putting the ball in the end zone. The NFL is all about scoring, and he was a dynamic red zone target. And you mentioned his speed. He's a long strider. It doesn't look like he's moving that fast, but he just jumps up on you. And he can win contested battles, Greens, because he's 6'3", 207 pounds. Yeah, he. I think what really stands out to me also, he averaged 15.7 yards per catch. And Joe Douglas and Adam Gase in Indianapolis at the Combine had talked about adding explosive, dynamic playmakers, and Denzel Mims certainly fits that bill. And what I just want to talk about his background as a high school player in Dangerfield, Texas. I mean, this guy was a four-sport athlete. He played baseball and then gave that up because of an arm injury. Then he was a football player. He was a track runner. I mean, this is a guy who's a freaky athlete, and he was the number 68 rated receiver in his 2016 recruiting class, and he had some other offers like from Arkansas State and Texas State and Texas Tech, but Denzel Mims actually grew up a Baylor fan, so once the Bears offered him a scholarship. He committed to them in under 24 hours. And he also has some DNA and where in his family, he has several cousins who played college football, including David Mims, who played at Texas state. And I just want to circle back to the senior bowl. He really did put on a show there. And I feel like, I don't remember which personnel member of the Jets said it, but he was somebody that maybe you didn't really hear about a lot in the beginning of the season, and he knocked the pre-draft process out of the park, which led him to the number 59 overall selection. Yeah, he really did. There's a guy who aced the offseason. He goes to Mobile. He takes care of business there. Then he follows it up at the Combine. The 4.38 was what? Tied for third fastest among all wide receivers this year. And the 6.66 second three-cone drill led all wideouts this year. Um, He's got long arms, too. 33 and seven eight seven eighth of an inch, which ranks. Oh yeah, four- I, I'm I'm really glad you mentioned that because um, that's the same arm length as Tristan Wirfs. Okay, who, so, of yeah, course, but, is a tackle. Yeah, so that means, it, and Joe Douglas pointed this out, and so did uh, Phil Savage and Rex Hogan and Chad Alexander and the like. Everybody talked about his catch radius. So in the National Football League, where you're not getting free all the time because everybody's so highly skilled and there's so many athletes on the, on the field. Um, that means that if you're throwing a ball and it's in his vicinity, he has the ability to get it. And that can be a quarterback's best friend. And uh, we'll talk about it later, but the jets are getting bigger on the outside and they've gotten faster on the outside. And that's going to be key for Sam Darnold as he moves forward. And one last athletic number before 
we hear from Denzel Mims himself, 38 and a half vertical jump. I mean, this guy's got bunnies, so he's clearly a freak athlete and he has the production to back it up. And without further ado, let's hear from Denzel Mims himself. Denzel, what was that moment like when you got the call from the Jets tonight? Uh, it was an unbelievable feeling. You know, it was always something I've been working my tail off since I was uh, 11 or 12. And um, just to get the call from the Jets, it was a very excited. I mean, it was a dream come true, and it's something I've been working for, working hard for. What kind of interaction did you have with the Jets during the pre-draft process? And did you have a feeling that, hey, this might be my professional team? Um, we had a few conversations. And, um, you know, I always thought, you know, I always thought that um, I was be a Jet one day, you know, in the back of my head. And when I actually got the phone call, I mean, I was very excited. I was very happy. What do you think about now you're going to be working under the tutelage of wide receivers coach Sean Jefferson? Also, Heinz Ward is a member of this staff mm -hmm. as well. Those are two guys who really thrived at the highest level in the National Football League. Uh, I mean, it's going to be amazing. You know, you got two great coaches and um, just to play for them and um, get taught, learn a lot of things from them. And they teach me a lot of things to help my game. And I mean, it's very exciting. I'm, and it's going to be a, I'm going to be very happy to play for them. How were you used at Baylor? How do they take advantage of your skill set? And maybe how did you develop over the time you were there? Uh, well, I developed a lot, you know, from my freshman year all the way to my senior year. I grew up and matured as a man on and off the field. And um, I just knew the game. I, I was I was taught the game of football, the actual details of everything on, on the football field. And, um, you know, the way they used me, you know, they knew I needed the ball in my hands. You know, I make a lot of good, I make a lot of plays when I got the ball in my hands and they know I need the ball. And um, when it comes down to crunch time, they know that I want the ball because I'm gonna make the play and try to help my team out to get the win. Denzel, how much pride do you take in making a contested catches because you know at this level there's going to be a lot of traffic around it oh most definitely i mean i take pride in a lot you know i work on it a lot and um i know that at the next level it's, it's a lot of great corners and i know that you ain't gonna always have separation so i mean it's gonna be a lot of 50 50 balls and um i mean i feel like i can come through with them what kind of feel did you get before the jets offensive system when you talk to the coaches um it's gonna be a great feel you know we got sam Darnold. And, I mean, that's a great quarterback, so I can't wait to get to work with him and make th a lot of things happen with him. Have you had an opportunity to watch Sam over the last couple of years? He's just 22 years old. He's already yeah. got two years of professional experience under his belt, and uh, he is a very accurate passer when given time, and he can make plays on the run. Oh, most definitely. I mean, I had, I had time to watch him and um, just to actually play, be playing with him and be on the same team as him. And same office with him. I mean, it's unbelievable. What about this receiving core? Have it taken a look at the Jets a little bit in that aspect? Brashad Perryman coming over, former first round pick himself mm -hmm. back in 2015. And this team has one of the better slot receivers in football, Jameson Crowder. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be great to play with them, you know. Um, those are unbelievable guys, they're very talented, they very great football players. And um, just to play with them and learn a lot of things from them is going to be very great. Do you take pride in the fact that uh, Joe Douglas uh, selected you? Obviously, he wanted to be in the National Football League. But with that being said, the Jets general manager said, we have to surround Sam Darnold with more speed and explosive playmakers. Yeah, well, most definitely. I mean, and they most definitely got play a playmaker and a uh, great speed, you know, and I can't wait to get to work with him. I like to ask guys this after they get drafted. What kind of scouting report would you give yourself? A scouting report? Yeah. Um, he's a great guy. He's an unbelievable player, football player. I mean, he makes plays. He's fast. He's physical. I mean, he's got everything that's, um, we, that you want in a receiver. And you're really happy tonight. But one thing that has stuck out to me about you and Makai Becton said that last night as well, the Jets first round pick is that you carry a chip on your shoulder, don't you? Oh, most definitely. I most definitely carry a chip on my shoulder. I mean, I, and it's, it's going to always be there. What do you think about coming to New York? Oh, I can't wait to come. I can't wait to see the big album. I'm ready for it. Sounds out. Congratulations. We appreciate your time. Thank you. 
EA, let's take a look now where Denzel Mims can fit in to this Jets roster. And you think about the kind of remaking of this receiving core. Jamison Crowder's entrenched in the slot, but at the end of last season, the Jets had Robbie Anderson. He now goes to the Carolina Panthers. And now the Jets have Brashad Perriman, Denzel Mims. They signed Josh Doxson in the offseason. Quincy Noon was a question mark. Maybe he'll return. And I think the Jets and Joe Douglas really have a different brand of receiver on this roster right now than the end of last season. Yeah, they do. Uh, You know, Braxton Berrios and uh, Vincent Smith, we should add them into the mix as well. And and we'll have to see how the depth chart all shakes out. But when you say different receiver, I I think the one thing that you look back at on with the Jets season, in particular their passing game, was maybe the lack of ability to get the contested balls. Um, So in Perryman and Mims now, these are guys that you're going to expect to win it when it's in the air, when it's up, and they have that good size-speed combination. And actually rare size speed combinations now for Mims it's going to be how quickly can he make the transition to a National Football League offense he was asked to run a lot of vertical routes at Baylor because you have a freaky athlete so let him run let him go down the field and take the top off the defense there weren't a lot lot of cornerbacks in college football who could run with him now it's going to be and Adam Gase thinks he can handle it they would not have taken him in the second round had they thought he couldn't handle it but it's going to be about developing a different route tree because he's going to be running a lot different system on Sundays than he did uh, on Saturdays well I'm glad you mentioned that because at the senior bowl that was one of the questions heading into the week how big of a route tree does Denzel Mims possess and I think that a lot of the football world was pleasantly surprised at what Denzel Mims could do especially in the one-on-ones the other part is Adam Gase told you and me and the media this that he thinks that Denzel Mims has a lot more room to grow and even though Denzel Mims knocked the pre-draft process out of the park and he's shown tremendous growth even from the end of his Baylor career to present there's so much more that he can do that Sean Jefferson and Heinz Ward and Adam Gase are going to try to get out of him where he can be a day one contributor and potentially a day one starter for this team. Awesome points about Sean Jefferson and Heinz Ward. Uh, What better room would you want to enter the National Football League under than a, a pair of guys who were so productive on the NFL level? So I think this is a perfect spot for Mims to wind up and I know he was pissed greens <laughs> make no mistake about it. He was upset that he was the 13th receiver taken in this deep draft class, but this might be a blessing in disguise because he's going to come in and get the opportunity to play right away and contribute right away. He's going to be asked to do a lot of things and the jets have a lot of confidence in him. And the other thing that I liked about the kid is he has said that he loves to block. I know their body styles are different, but what better person to learn how to block at the receiver spot for Denzel Mims than Heinz Ward? Heinz Ward was obviously notorious as a blocker on the outside for the Pittsburgh Steelers for many years. And I really like Denzel Mims's answer where he told you, you know, I, I want to earn my stripes first as a blocker and then the ball will come to me. That was the second edition of the Draft Pick Profile Series presented by Verizon. EA and I will break down each Jets draft pick. And next up, we're going to the third round with Cal Safety Ashton Davis. 